Hello everybody and welcome to part four of our Jackson Bell Model 62 full of confusion can't find the right schematic radio. Anyhow, um, we finally got all this sorted out and we have pretty good news here. Number one, uh, the reason we were getting excessive current, which was lighting up my dim light and causing the one amp fuse to blow, was because there was actually a short on the filament circuit for the uh, Type 80 rectifier tube. Um, so I ended up rewiring all of that and rerouting it, and that corrected that problem, and now everything's working properly. Now, I know I've been saying this through every part of this video, this series, and in fact, this transformer was way too high of voltage. And after a lot of kind of going through the history of all this and looking at it, I've come to the conclusion that when this was installed, this 3K resistor here um, was put in kind of as a voltage dropping resistor for this transformer. So it was too high. I ended up replacing it with a 25 watt chassis mount 4.7K resistor. So if you kind of look in here, you can see it right there. And uh, that took care of that problem. Now, my voltages, I really don't have an accurate voltage uh, chart for this. You know, not, at least not yet. I mean, I have some voltages that I, on some uh, documentation I have for this radio, and it gives you an idea of what it should all be. But that is provided that all of your tubes are present and accounted for. And I still, as of yet, do not have all of the tubes for this. And I haven't really gotten to a part where I want to populate all the tubes into this yet. So, where are we? <laughs> well, lots of changes. The first thing I did was I installed the dropping resistor. And I installed these two 250-volt uh 10 microfarad capacitors in series. So that gives us a 5 microfarad at 500 volt uh, capacitor right at the output of the transformer. So even if that creeps up about to 400 or 450 or even a little higher, we've got plenty of uh, leeway in this capacitor to handle it. From there, it goes through the dropping resistor and drops down to a more reasonable voltage in, you know, in the mid 200s which is really where we need to be with this. And then that's where, so this wire here is actually the beginning of your actual power supply, your DC B plus rail for this radio. Uh, from there, it goes through this coil and out to this capacitor. So that represents, let me take a look here. That represents, let me drop you down this portion of the schematic right here. So we come right out of our B plus line, uh, out of our 80 rectifier tube, and we go up into this coil, which is this coil up here, come out of the coil, go to another 10 microfarad. These are 10s right now. They don't make 8s anymore. They're hard to find. And goes to ground. So that's what you're seeing here with these two capacitors right here. So you have one, two. Okay. So you have this capacitor and this capacitor on either side of this coil. Then we also go into the field coil, which is right here. There's your field coil going to your speaker. See your speaker? And it comes out of the field coil, comes back to one of the pins of the plugs, and goes to another capacitor, which is right up here. So there are your three filter capacitors and your two Pi circuits. And actually, I added a third Pi circuit just for the purpose of dropping the voltage into where we need it, you know, from where the original transformer was. Okay. Uh, now, I'm still going to have to change this little bypass capacitor on the cathode of the 45 uh, tube uh, 
to a 1 microfarad because it's a 0.1 right now, but that's really not going to make much difference in the performance of the radio. It's still going to play. And we'll tweak that later. Um, I've been going over and over and over again through all of the wiring, making sure everything's where it needs to be. And as it looks right now, I'm fairly confident, not 100%, but fairly confident that we got most of it correct. So uh, with the 80 rectifier in there, with all of this power supply wired up, and you can see I have my probe connected to the output of the field coil on the third capacitor, which is going to be right here. So we're going to check the voltage right there, okay? And I'm also going to connect, I have a little load resistor that I put, it's a 4.7K, 25 watt. I'm just going to put it right on that uh, one coil. I just want to put a little bit of a current load on this. So it'll drop the voltage to you know to where it will be when the tubes are all in there. Okay, so I'm trying to simulate the tubes a little bit, and we're going to turn this on through our dim bulb tester. So we have our dim bulb right here, and we have our meter right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this on, and I'm going to show you when I plug this in through the dim bulb that the bulb no longer lights up. There's no longer a short and this thing will now um, run at very very low current. Okay, So let's turn on the meter. Let's plug this in. It's now plugged in. Okay, So you can see the dim bulb. There is no light on the bulb. Teeny tiny little glow. See that? And if you look at the meter at the output of that coil, I'm running about 165 volts. It's climbing a little bit as it heats up and things settle. So everything's in a reasonable place where I want it to be right now. Okay, I'm just unplugging it again. So the underneath of the chassis, for the most part, I'm going to say is finished. And I'm now ready to start populating some of the 20, Type 24 tubes and I'm going to look and see if I can get any kind of a signal injected through this. Now, of course, we can't hear it through the speaker because we don't have a good Type 45 tube. Uh, the 45 that I have, is I tested it on my tube tester. It is completely, totally shot. It does not work at all. This is nothing but a display piece now. It does not work. Um, so really, the only thing we can do is... Uh, connect up the type 24s which most of those are not really good either but I think I have a few that we can test and we can at least see if we can get some RF to go through some of the stages and maybe we'll try to use the signal tracer or something like that so with that being said my next uh, when we continue here we're going to try to have some tubes in this and see if we get any kind of uh, any kind of action out of the stages at all. So we're getting really close to this radio starting to work as long as everything's okay. So we'll be back. Okay, I'm going handheld here for a minute to give you the scenario. I have the three RF amplifier tubes fitted in here. Now remember, they're not good. Um, they need replaced, but they do function. So they're put in here. I have full power the the radio is barely drawing not even a quarter of an amp I have my signal tracer set to RF trace okay so you can see RF and you can see it's set I have my signal generator at negative 20 dBm and I'm just kind of going in here without even the ground connected of my uh, signal tracer into the antenna jack. Now remember, this is a tuned RF radio, so there's no IF. So I'm, I'm at 1 megahertz right now, which is half about halfway through the dial scale in this. And if you listen... There you go. There's... The first RF, now this tube's not very good, but you can hear it works. 
and here's our third RF amplifying it even more so it's amplifying this bad tube but you can hear and again I have not tuned these either so this stage may be a little bit off tune from these ones so next thing we're gonna have to do is try to get them all to tune in together but this is very 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 promising because right out of the box I haven't touched any of the tuning capacitors or anything like that and we're already getting signal and it's pretty quiet I'm not hearing any static I'm not hearing any kind of problems like that so uh, as you can see um, we're getting some pretty good success here um, you can see we got the nice glow of the tubes here if I can shut some lights off maybe you can see that a little bit don't know can you see them there you go one right there one right there and one right there and you can even see the uh, high voltage type 80 rectifier nothing seems to be red plating or having any problems like that so uh, I'm gonna have to call this a success I think we're going to have a uh, a working radio here so I guess this is about as far as I can take it um, until I can get proper tubes fitted into here so this is part four is going to be kind of a short uh, video but I want to get this posted up there so you all can see where we're at and then uh, once the owner gets me some new tubes here or I can dig up some new tubes we'll move on and see if we can get this thing to work the whole way and see if we can get some sound out of the speaker so we're gonna call this one uh, part four short part four and uh, more to come